So what this video is about is creating a large scale metal shell from various pieces and I've started off by making a foam model template which I eventually put cement on and then I weld the various pieces together. So you can see the size of the shell that I actually started with. This shell is actually called a Noah's Ark clam shell. I hope you enjoy the process. Okay, so this is my backyard at the moment. That phone thing you see in front of me is what I've been working with, struggling with for week upon week upon week, trying to get a specific shape. Now, you may not know this, but foam loves to stick to other pieces of foam. So the yellow is the expandable foam and the white is the polystyrene foam that people throw out. Now I'm not going to show any brand names for this foam, but all you need is foam and you can cut it with a saw, which should be lying around. There it is. There's the saw. Okay. Well, at this point, I'm just getting a bit I'm starting to look at the middle, the inside, and there's a whole lot of areas that really need thinning out. But as I start to thin out, I'm realizing that some of these uh, points like this are actually getting a bit too thin, and I need to put some kind of reinforcing here just to try and protect it a bit. So what I've realized is that instead of trying to put the rod in this way from the top, it's common sense, I suppose. It's easier to put it in this way from the thicker side and up. So I'm just going to give that a go now. Yeah, the other thing I'm going to have to try and do, you know, as you can see, it's a bit thicker here than what it needs to be. But as much as I would like to just saw it off in one bit, I'm going to have to hack bits and pieces off which will mean more cleaning um, but I'll show you what I mean so I just have to do it in really small bits like I said I prefer to do it in larger bits less cleaning and more um, good foam that I can reuse but, so this is just going to be today's work just small bits to try and clear it out, get it a bit thinner. The cameraman could come a bit closer. So I don't really want to cut too far in and I'm just hacking it off in bits. Um, some of these bits are actually very hard to get to. Um, and now it's really starting to look like it might be a shell rather than just a block of foam. So you can see how on the, this is actually the front of the shell. I'm just putting in these stakes. I don't know what, pegs, whatever you like to call them. Just so I can mark out on the other side where I need to raise the shell up. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this over now. Um, so you can see, see here where I'm going to put the lines in, over here. No, probably should do it like that because it does sort of flare out. Um, so when I get down to this part, I'll have to make sure it's very sanded down so it actually blends in. Oh, okay. Sort of actually goes for there. But I'll probably stop putting foam about here. That camera okay you can probably see me just drawing some lines in 
just some very rough lines. Now this is actually where I have to go up and I'll lay some more foam down like I did in this one and I'll sand it down in the areas between. So what I've been using so far uh, to do all this cutting is a saw, just a Bunnings one, and uh, a small saw, another Bunnings one. But sometimes you get areas that you just can't get into. So what I've got is a um, foam cutter. It came from America, so it's got one of the transformers there. Um, and this makes it easy to get into difficult areas. So I'm hoping it takes a few minutes to heat up. So I'm really going to try and get into here. Um, you'll notice it's got a bit of a bend in it. That's for me using it all the time. Let's see if I can get in there now. And it will actually cut through things like butter. It's um, amazing. Once it heats up, and I'm just going to go in there again try and get a bit more now the reason why I don't use this very often is because the fumes are something terrible and they're probably very noxious and will probably kill you so, um, so there we are now don't touch it because um, you'll burn yourself it gets really, really hot. Okay. Now, I'm going to try for another area, another difficult area, um, here. Um, as you can see, I put a small hole in it as I was trying to cut it off. Um, but I'm not worried too much about that because once I put the cement in, I can fill up that little hole. Um, what I'm going to do now is take some of my own advice and I'm going to try and sand down this mess of stuff here. I'm just going to use sandpaper that you use for paint. And maybe I need to hold it a bit more, get it a bit firmer under my arm. this for stuff where you just can't get in there no, I'm just used so today I'm just uh, finishing up the inside now you can see um, the expanding foam I've just put um, a little an old drill bit in uh, a 1 8 I think it is um, so if you don't use a full can, you can just put something in there. Otherwise, it becomes really hard and you won't be able to get out the foam again. Um, so don't shake it up too much, just a bit of a shake. Um, and then you'll need to get a, um, a thingy. I prefer the shorter tubes rather than the longer ones. Um, the longer ones they tend to block up more easily there we are so I've kind of um, as you can see I've kind of pegged out where I'm going to be putting things in um, not really necessary today but on a windy day it's um, pretty important so I'm just going to remove the first peg ah. and as you can see I should have really pegged the stuff above but anyway I have a fair idea as to where things go so I'm just going to squirt down a little bit of foam. You know, sometimes depending on the slope, you might want to just, um, yeah, I've got that in the camera. You might want to put it on the actual foam piece rather than the shell, but that should be plenty there. Um, uh, where does this go again? Um, yeah, that's one thing about it one reason why you peg them in so you don't get it mixed up with all the other pieces so I'm going to give it a bit more foam around here right that should be plenty so it does expand um, 
and it's getting larger as we go up that's it and you can squash it down once you squash it down it won't expand very much now the next bit of foam was this piece so I'm going to mark the area out again so it's getting to quite a bit of a slope and maybe I should be um, putting it on the foam rather than uh, not the right way around um, so this time I'll just put it on the actual foam a few bits in there we haven't quite filled it in so I'm going to do that now it's usually good to do this with the tail end of the foam because then you don't waste so much and the tail end of the foam usually comes up much slower well, one of the things I like to do um, any excess foam I just usually gets a bit sticky but you really don't want that there just take it off with your finger or something else um, yeah and then sometimes it needs to be there <clears throat> Uh, might just put a little bit of foam in that hole there and yeah always remember to wear gloves with this this is horrible stuff if it gets on your skin almost impossible to get off without pulling your skin off okay and the other thing is when it's at the tail end it's not going to expand very much so if you're just wanting to fill in little holes it's pretty useful for that And you may realize that you know after it does start to expand you'll have to take off more I mean, you don't have to but if you leave it then it's just more problems later on so I'm just going to take off a little bit more okay there we go all right as soon as you um, touch your stuff the expansion stops actually or well, pretty much 